something I'll always be eternally grateful for is that I got the gift of being born at the end of the 80s. TV pop culture, fluorescent pinks and blues, along with incredibly frenetic cartoons and action movies mixed to synth-based electronic keyboards were all the craze, even if suddenly they were fading out. It's only so often that a piece of media attempts to bring back some of that charm in our past that was lost from those known 80s, Ubisoft's Blood Dragon being a prime example, but what happens when you mix retro with modern, when you combine top-down shooter with button-sensitive melee boss battles, all while being presented like a straight-to-Blu-ray animated movie? To an Afro Samurai fan, they will instantly connect with the sleek and incredibly electrical art style of Takashi Okazaki, whose previous anime creations shine brightly in a more sci-fi themed format. The question though, is does Fury bring something old yet new to a genre of games that doesn't seem to progress, or ultimately, is this back to the drawing board? Fury you play as a silent yet calm white haired protagonist, chained up against his will for some unknown reason and tortured over and over again while being mocked by the mysterious multi-faced Jailer. It is only when an ambiguous bunny mask wearing character comes along that you are set free and set out to dispatch your jerk faced captor in what might be seen as a form of revenge best served cold. Instantly within the first five minutes, Fury shows you the player what it has to offer, linear, short segmented story between zany multi-layer boss fights that truly feel like a battle to the death thanks to the life based health system that both characters share while being trapped in this one to one duel. <laughs> What many will come to realise is that the first cutscene, first few steps from your cell, and ultimately your first battle is the frequent dish this product only has to offer, but in a sense, this isn't actually a bad thing. It's a game that sticks to its guns without having to derail from its proposed concept. This is in all intent and purpose a boss battle game that leans barely if at all to explorative genericness that many other top down shooter games present. In this you have a set number of bosses to fight, some breadcrumby character development in between, and then finally a finale that will actually blow the socks off of a few. To say Fury's conclusion is in the pop and brilliance would actually be an insult, and this is all while watching a game unfold that you feel will initially go nowhere. Fury succeeds in surprising through its narrative not only as the game opens up, and these characters you see as enemies begin speaking more and more on their suspicious opinions of you, but its final section actually draws you back in through full swing to an ending you wish didn't actually end. Time is a picture in motion through eternity. When you appeared, everything got still. You made the picture stop. I'm here to make my clocks tick again. The journey itself is one of quaint loneliness. The barefooted samurai casually walks from boss environment to boss environment while his cosplaying companion drips draw monologue. Your surroundings for each boss encounter are a thing of beauty and fury cell shaded graphics bring a certain cartoony charm to the whole experience. In a way these small closed off lands wouldn't actually look the way that they do without it because any more realistic or any less cartoony and something just wouldn't seem right. Hmm. I did not expect that. Not from you. I think I saw you hesitate after the last fight. You, of all people. Why would you ever hesitate? Gameplay works like a more mainstream hardcore Japanese shooter. The player runs around a circular open space while battling a singular opponent with either right stick shooter mechanics or rapid fire or charged shots, along with dash jumps, parries and sword based button mashing. The important thing about Fury's combat is that it's a game of timing. Each boss works in a set pattern over a number of phases based on their health. Once you beat one health bar, the next phase opens up, and this enemy you thought you had all figured out drops some new layer of smackdown on you. At first you simply shoot your target as their health slowly begins to chip away, then they shoot back with waves of laser death, balls of universe filling plasma doom, and after dodging all of that and whittling down even enough health you are then put in a close combat sword fight that really tests your timing and endurance. 
Thankfully the combat works really well and so does its parry system. Enemies shine a shimmering light and chime at a specific time when they're about to attempt to beat down Flurry, and by the end of your first or even second playthrough, you'll be battling them away like Neo at the end of The Matrix. The dash system does leave a little bit more to be desired though, with its range sometimes throwing you directly into incoming attacks during the more crazy clutter, but it's manageable. Your beginning attempts will, in a way, feel frustrating, unfair, and even cheap. The game doesn't have time to hold your hand, and it has reason for this. It's a short, epic journey that wants each confrontation to feel explosive, and because of its price tag, worth it. Why so stubborn? Just go back, there is no better outcome. Later, as you get more used to Fury's gameplay stylings, you as a player begin to understand more about how it works. I could even suggest it helps you become a better gamer, not only making you wait for the perfect time to strike, but also in utilising a limited toolset to overcome an adversary that feels ten times more powerful than you. Overall, from its systems to its interface and even replayability, Fury could be quite repetitive. If it wasn't for the really fun fights that are even the purpose of the game, then this would have been insanely lacklustre. If there is one drawback to the main meal, it's that Fury does suffer from something games before it have always seemed to fall in – overused animations. The game is attractive, don't get me wrong, but like God of War, Ninja Gaiden, or even Metal Gear Rising, it is head banging to see your hero use the same cinematic animations over and over again. This is especially prevalent in the second to last boss fight, where the cinematography amps up to 11, even if just for a few seconds, showing a glimmer of variety in its animation work. Game developers need to force the animated selection for the betterment of their game, along with the immersion for the gamer, because a singular reused animation specific to each boss fight just isn't enough. It is such a small complaint though, that to many, it actually won't be that much of a problem. It's just an observation that games of this calibre seem to follow. Fury, for all its intents and purposes, is a very damn good downloadable title. Its gameplay is fun, its story initially light but progressively deep as you play, and it is all combined with a fantastic soundtrack that helps the combat spiral into epic set piece after epic set piece every single time. For this I'm going to give Fury a surprisingly well deserved gold muffin. At first I didn't even think it was possible, but as the game began to grow on me and so did my skills, I just couldn't shake the feeling that Fury left me with, especially in wanting to top my own achievements by tackling its unlockable speedrun mode and harder difficulties. But what did you think of Fury? Let us know in the comment section below because we would love to know. But until next time, ciao.